What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Keep a Hoop YouTube channel. Today, I wanted to go over Rondo's impact on the Clippers and looking at it from a more numbers perspective. Uh, we, we talked about Rondo on the Clippers before, but it was a lot more of just kind of breaking down film and talking about what he might bring to the Clippers and, and a lot more uh, prediction type stuff. But now we have some more numbers to back it up. Um, you know, right now, the Clippers are 6-0 and with him in the lineup. He's provided a lot of what they needed. Uh, some defense and playmaking. You know, he's averaging uh, 6.5 points per game, 4.7 assists per game in 17 minutes, right? So it was really impactful minutes for them. Um, I do think that the most surprising thing is the three-point percentage, right? Rondo, for a lot of his career, has been considered a bad shooter. And, you know, he has improved on it a little bit over the last few years. But he's by no means someone you'd expect to shoot 38 from three, especially when he's taking two a game. So I do think that's going to fall off at some point. I think the 100% free throw percentage is also likely to come down as well. That being said, you know, he, the Clippers didn't get him for his scoring. Uh, these are all just added benefits um, to their team. It's not something that they're going to rely on him to do. But I do think these numbers are going to come down. And, um, you know, I mean, they're obviously not going to win the rest of the games. Um, with him in the lineup right um, but come playoff time his experience as we talked about um, on both sides of the ball is gonna gonna be important so some of the numbers that did pop out to me um, right now he's actually top 10 in, in assist to turnover ratio and assist ratio um, out of players who average more than 15 minutes per game so you know just you can tell his ability to even if he's not the one getting the assists um, to put his team in the right position um, to run the right offensive plays, um, getting his guys in position uh, to succeed, get good off good looks. Um, you know, we knew that coming in, but he's able to do that a lot. He's uh, up there with guys like Chris Paul, TJ McConnell, um, Corey Joseph, Draymond Green. You know, some of those guys aren't what we consider elite point guards, but guys who, you know, some people might consider facilitators. Um, you know, low turnover guys. Um, so he's definitely doing his job and, and, and what, what the Clippers needed him to do right there. But something that I was actually really impressed with um, besides that, because again, that's that's stuff that we kind of expected from him, right? You, you consider Rondo, you, I mean, you think of Rondo and then it's synonymous with, you know, playmaking and passing. But the things that really surprised me was the fact that he, right now, out of all players averaging more than 15 minutes per game, um, and you look at the the span that he's been a Clipper. So since April 4th, he's second in the league in defensive rating. Um, you know, so his ability to just be in the right place, right? High basketball IQ. He has the length um, to, to bother teams and, and their offensive sets. Um, and, you know, the, the Clippers are a team that, you know, have a decent amount of guys who, who, who can defend, you know, Batum when healthy and locked in is a solid defender and you have Paul George and Kawhi, and you have Zubak down low, and Ibaka um, at, at times. I know he's not the defender he used to be, but so that definitely adds to, to their, um, you know, playoff uh, potential. Um, and, and even if you look away from the rating and then you just go defensive win share, um, he's also, I believe, top 20. Um, he's 16th in, in the league um, during that span in uh, defensive win shares for players who played at least 15 minutes too. So, you know, I'm really impressed with, with Rondo. Um Again, we went over the film a bit, uh, I think, last week, but I wanted to go into the numbers to really kind of explain what he's really been doing. Again, the assist to turnover ratio, the assist ratio, which is the amount of um, the percentage of possessions um, where you're getting an assist um, while you're on the floor. Not you personally, but just someone on the team, right? Um, possession ends in an assist. And then the the, def the defensive side was what really surprised me because we we've we've all seen Rondo be very good defensively, but it's usually in the playoffs, and we haven't seen it too much consistently as of late, you know. But I do remember the Boston Celtics days. Um, I mean, he was just a menace on defense, hustled, and with that wingspan, could just really bother a lot of teams and players. Um, and we we saw him play really good defense in the. Um, playoff series when he was on the Pelicans against the Blazers where they had the upset sweep so we knew what you know we we've seen it before but just not at a consistent level as of late uh, but the fact that he's coming you know coming into LA 
um, super locked in, focused, ready to, I think, just go back to the playoffs and, and um, you know, try to make that uh, playoff Rondo thing come back. And, and um, you know, I've been really impressed with his defense. So that that's the thing that surprised me. Again, I, if you're a Clippers fan or just NBA fan in general, I, I would say expect the three-point percentage and the free throw numbers to come down. Um, you know, I'd be very, very surprised if those stayed up. But, um, you know, we talked about it last time. Uh, very good pickup for the for the Clippers. And, um, you know, we'll see what kind of role he has going into the playoffs. We'll see if his minutes um, rise at all. Because, again, at 17 minutes per game, it's not like he's playing a crazy amount of minutes. Um, but, you know, Doc Rivers does seem to like um, Pat, Patrick Beverly um, and, and Reggie Jackson and, and Rondo being kind of a three-headed monster because they do give give you three different things. Um, at this point, Rondo seems to be the best combination of defense and offense. Again, his scoring isn't crazy, but he's been shooting the three ball well and what he's able to do to help out Kawhi and Paul George. Reggie Jackson is more of a scorer, an offensive-minded guy. He does try on defense, but not really effective on that end. And then Patrick Beverly, more so just a defender. So we'll see how um, you know the rotations end up going and if anything changes. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, possibly a video coming out tomorrow on the Suns and Chris Paul. Um, but yeah, um, please remember to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Follow us on our social media pages to stay tuned with our latest videos. Um, links will be in the description below. But until next time, peace.